Hey, I hope you're doing well today. I want you to pause this video, get your coffee, get your tea, water, juice, whatever you want to drink. I have mine here ready, very hot. Today, I want to show you my setup. I want to show you my computer, what I use, the apps that I use on a daily basis. I was the other day um, chatting with the uh, DevTips Discord server members. Awesome community. We were sharing photos about setups, um, discussing about it. So if you want to share yours, join the DevTips Discord server and share your setup. We can talk about it. Let's chat. All right. So what I want to do is share a little bit of my computer. Then I'm going to share the apps that I use. And at the end of the video, I'm going to share more in detail about my VS code because VS code is the app that I use every day to code and create my website, web apps. So I want you to just learn a little bit about it and what I do and what I use. My name is Jay and this is DevTips. I have two 27 inches Samsung monitors. I love the look. They are five years old and they still work like new. My microphone is a blue Yeti. As you can hear, the sound quality is very good. My computer is a 2018 Mac mini. Here you can see some of the specs. My mouse and keyboard are Apple. I love the modern look, the color, and it feels so good. My webcam is a Logitech Brio HD. It looks amazing for such a small webcam. This is my setup. This is what I use every day for coding, video editing, photo editing, and a lot of more. Now I want to show you the inside of my computer, the apps that I use every day. So here are my apps, the ones that I use on a daily basis. Let's go through them. Adobe XD, I use it for interface design, for example, designing websites, web apps, mobile apps, and you can even prototype to have a better understanding of the user experience. I use Adobe Illustrator for logos, icons, SVG, or any vector graphic. I use a Photoshop for to optimize photos for web, creating graphics for advertising and editing any kind of photo. Screenflow, I use it for record and edit my videos. Discord, to communicate with my friends, the awesome DevTips community and other communities around the world. And the last one is VS Code. VS Code, I use it all day, every day. My computer's always turned on, it's on sleep mode. I go there to the morning, VS Code is already open every day. So what I wanna show you first is Emmet. Emmet is something that will help to code very fast. It's already integrated into VS Code, so I'm gonna show you something quick. So let's say dot .container. If you hit tab, you will create a div with a class of container. Take a look, there you go. Div class of container. All right, I'm going to remove that. Let's do something more complicated. So let's do the same. I want a div with a class of container. Inside that div with the class of container, I want a list. So, um, and then inside that unordered list, I want li. How many li's? By three. And if you notice here, they are showing us kind of a preview of, of what are we creating. So we have a div class container, ul, li, li, li. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. So we can keep going. We can do so inside each li, we want a link with a class of, I don't know, button. And you can see it actually start generating that preview. And same thing, if you hit tab, boom, you have it right there and ready to go. So that's Emmet. And that's a, kind of the basics. There's a lot to do. If you learn it, there is a lot that great things that you can do with it. All right, so I'm going to click code, preferences, extensions, and let's see what we have. So ESLint, first is it helps me to um, prevent errors on JavaScript. So every time I'm coding JavaScript, if there is an error, something um, weird that I did is going to show me um, an error and I can fix it before I save it or publish it. 
I have Liquid. Liquid is more for Shopify. So if you're a Shopify developer or want to code for Shopify, this is going to help you, the highlighting. Live SAS compiler. Live SAS compiler is just, I create a SAS file and I want to compile that to CSS. That way I can use it. There is a very easy way to do it here. And I'm going to show you. Live server. You know, it launch that um, a local server on your computer for that specific project. Prettier, it helps you to make sure that um, your code, your CSS, HTML looks good. All right, I'm going to show you that too. And then the SAS highlighter, just making sure that SAS looks good. So let's close this. Let's make sure that we can test Prettier first. So. I don't know, let's mess this up a little bit. So let's say we have this here. We have H2 right here. All this here. All right, what else we can do? So I know that sometimes you have something like this, for example, or maybe not like this, not that horrible, but um, let's say that you wanna make sure it looks good when you save it. Prettier helps. So I'm gonna save the file, take a look. Safe. Boom. Looks beautiful and Prettier is doing that for you. Now, the cool thing is that you can create your own rules. So if you don't want that to happen in that specific pattern or whatever, you can create rules that, you know, please don't do that. I don't want to fix it like that. You know, so you it's not tied to those rules. You just you can modify and create your own rules. Okay, just letting you know. All right, ESLint. Let's go to the JavaScript file. All right, so I don't know if you can know it is. I'm sure you can, but here you can see the squiggly lines. So this is because there is something wrong. So for example, I hover is gonna say is saying unexpected var use let and const instead, and there is the name of the rule now. This is something that I like. I personally like because I don't. I do not use var. I use constant length. So there's a rule that I added that says every time I use var, please let me know that I can't just replace it by let or const. All right. So let's go ahead. We can just replace it by const. All right. That's gone. Good. All right. Console log. Console log. I use it a lot. So it says unexpected console log statement and the rule. Now, this is something that I want to use. So I want to make sure that I can. So you have a couple options. You can click here, quick fix. Disable no, no, no console for this line. Disable for the entire file. So I'm going to disable for this line only. I'm going to click there. And there you go. It adds a comment to just disable that for this line so we can use console log, no problem. But you can create your own rule and add it to the global file and that's it. It's never going to tell you, let you know that, hey, don't use console log. OK, if that's what you want. Let's remove that, for example. There you go. Please insert this. OK. Now, the good thing is I'm going to remove this. I'm going to use var here again. And you have these errors. I'm going to save it. And look at that. It actually fix that for you. So let's say I've used a var. I save it. It's fixed. I don't even notice that it was a var. So let's go ahead and do, I don't know, this test close to zero. Let's see what it's going to tell me. The identifier test has already been declared. So that's a good one. Because maybe you have this already at the top of your code. You don't see it, but it's going to let you know, hey, this is already declared. So ESLint, it helps a lot. It's really good if you code JavaScript. All right. Let's go to the SAS. So I have here a folder with a style, style, style SAS file. And let's go to a little bit. So let's do container. Um, let's say header. Um, and then inside the header, we have an H1. And the H1 is going to be font size 3EM, for example. So I'm going to save that. 
nothing's going to happen. Um, the browser doesn't understand SAS. So you have to compile SAS to CSS. And I don't know if you noticed, there is a button here that says watch SAS. So I'm going to make sure I'm inside that folder with SAS. I'm going to click watch SAS. And here you go. I don't know if you noticed, but it created a uh, style CSS. I'm going to click. There you go. Container, header, h1, font size 3M. Perfect. That's what I did. You have the map and you have your SAS. And now each time, because it's watching right there, it says watching. I can say, let's say, um, color, say a black. I'm going to save it. Remember, it's watching. So I'm going to go back to the CSS. Right here. There you go. Now we have the color. Perfect. So that's how it is. That's how it works. Sometimes I'm creating a basic landing page or a basic website. Simple. Um, I just use SAS because I like it. I click the watch SAS. That's it. It compiles. I'm good to go. Then when you're done, you click the watching button and you're done. Cool. All right. So the go live button here is the one that creates the um, local server. So I'm going to click there. And there you go. You have here the port and everything. We have the, um, the website working in our local server. I'm going to close that. If you want to stop, just click it. Disposing and you're good to go. And that's it for my setup. I hope you learned something new. I'm going to put links in the description if you want to install those extensions and how they use and how to use it. You can go there and learn a little bit more about it. Again, my name is Jay and this is DevTips.